Hey guys, welcome to my Sew Bliss. Today I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this sewing machine cover. It is um, patchwork done, so all squares. It's really like quilter friendly if you know any quilting techniques. Um, and if you don't, this is actually a great way to get started and try some of those techniques out because it is so much smaller than a quilt and just so handy. Um, I love it to cover my Baby Lock Brilliant, which is the machine I'm gonna be using today. This is an awesome machine, um, great investment for anyone who is really interested in sewing and wants to be able to do all the things. This is one of those machines that is great and will last a very long time. So I'll put a link down below for it where you guys can check it out. Um, for this tutorial, this was a kit that Baby Lock did with Riley Blake Designs, and you can get those kits at um, a Baby Lock distributor. If they have it online, I'm gonna try and find it, and I'll put a link down below if I find one. Um, but if not, just contact your local Baby Lock dealer, and they should have kits for you. Um, if not, again, I'll link down below, or I'll just link like instructions of stuff that you're gonna need. Um, because it's just so handy just to get the kit, but if you, that's not possible, I wanna make sure you guys are able to still make this. So this is just a really fun, it ties on each side, has these pockets right here. I don't know, it's just, it's such a fun little machine cover. So I'm super excited to have mine made and ready to go. So once you have all your supplies, um, like the pattern and the fabric um, you're going to get that all cut out and ready to go based on what the instructions say and um, you're just going to need that and then all of your basic sewing supplies and that should be it so let's get started so for our first step we're going to prepare all of our fabric so here i have my strips cut out my squares cut out and then you're going to have these five inch squares you're going to have a stack of them and i'm just going to take two of them and you can pick and choose what fabrics you want to put together. And I'm going to put two right sides together, just like this. And then I'm going to go from opposite sides, so opposite corners, and put a ruler down. A ruler is very helpful during this process. And then I have my marking tool. I really love this one. Um, it has chalk refills in here. And then I just mark along that line, whoops, <laughs> make sure you do a straight line. And if you need to, you can pin this as well. A lot of times I don't pin mine because it just takes more time. Um, and this is something I like to do just quick and kind of go, go, go. Um, whereas pinning kind of slows down that process. So I usually don't pin, but if you want to, just pin on either side. Cause then we're ready and we're gonna take it over to our sewing machine. And over at our sewing machine, we are going, we're not going to sew on this line. That's something that can get kind of confusing. Don't sew on it. You're going to sew a quarter of an inch out on either side of that line. And that is how we're going to create those half square triangles. So it actually works out really nicely. I'll just go over. And a lot of times I will um, pin all of mine together, all of my pieces. We need 42 um, half square triangles in total for this project. So I'm gonna pin mine and then do them all at the same time. So I'll stitch down one side and then continue on with the next one and then the next one without even cutting my threads. Um, and then once I get one side done, I'll trim it and then flip it around and do this side as well. So let me go over to the sewing machine. I'll show you just how I do it and get those half square triangles all ready. Once I'm over the sewing machine, on this machine, I really love that right here, it has that quarter inch marking. So what I drew with um, my marking tool, my chalk on my fabric, I'm gonna line that up right over my quarter inch mark. And even the presser foot has, I'm just using a regular presser foot, has like a little notch right here that I can line that up with. So I'm lining that up, not stitching on top of that. And I will just stitch right across. Make sure no puckering or bubbling is happening or shifting of your fabric. And then usually I would just take my other squares and just keep going down, 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 and then cut my fabrics 
and turn it around just like that and sew down the other side at a quarter of an inch as well. And then once those are finished, I can take those back over to my cutting table. Then with both sides sewn, I'm gonna take my ruler again and my rotary cutter and line it up with the diagonal line. And I'm just gonna cut on top of the diagonal line. Perfect. Okay, so now I have two separate pieces. And when you open them up, you can see I have my triangle now. And I can do that with both pieces. And I'll just take them over to my ironing board and iron this seam over to the darkest fabric. So for this, it's gonna be the blue. So I would just iron it this way, make sure everything's laying flat. So that way we can come back and square it up. With those ironed, now I'm gonna square them up. And I just have this square that's six and a half inches. And I just like to line it up with my 45 degree angle line. I put it right on there. And we're gonna make these for three inches. So right now I'm just gonna do three and a half inch. So I can square up one side. I just like to square up both, both sides. <laughs> okay, so I do that, flip it. And honestly, I don't even know if that's really necessary. I just like to make sure that everything, all sides are equal and even. Oop, a little shifting there. Don't do that. So, just making those the right size. Oh. And then I'll do that for each and every one of my half square triangle ones. With all my fabrics prepared, I'm then ready to start laying them out in the diagram that's shown in um, the instructions. So, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and see what I like. This is what a lot of quilters like to do, is kind of this design, um, figuring out like the placement and pattern of everything. So just kind of have fun with it and see what best suits you. Once you have it laid out, before you even do any sewing, just kind of look at it and see what's working and what's not working. So like right here, these completely line up and match and I don't like that at all. So then I might shift some things around, change things up, maybe even take one of these out and put another one in just remember that like then I'll have a less one less for the other ones for the other rows <laughs> if that made sense but then say I do this one here and then I want that one and maybe that one there and then it's kind of looking a little better and if I still don't like this then I can mix things up even more and maybe do something like this and then flip more around so just play with it until you like what you see so once you have a few at least a few rows done if not the whole thing um, I'd like to start then by taking I'm just gonna start at the top and take two pieces fold them right sides together and sew down along this edge and then once that's sewn so I'll have those pieces sewn together and then I'll just take the next two and sew those two together and continue down until I've done one whole row. And then once like those four, I would then place it like this and sew that right there. And then same thing, place that one, sew them together. So you're just piecing it all together until you have a whole row. So that's how I start doing mine. And then we start adding to it and going down our rows. So you can pin them if you want, if you feel like you need to, but again, that just takes a lot more time. Because they're so small, it's a lot easier. Um, if you don't pin them, you just take them like this. And if you just kind of make sure you always have like the one on the right on top, then it keeps it exactly how you wanted it or had, had it laid out. So then I can take all those over and know I'm sewing this side right here and sew them all at the same time. So it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker 
So I'm going to be sewing all of my pieces together at a quarter of an inch. Once you have all of your rows sewn, you're then going to be sewing those rows together. So I'll just take my top two rows, this is my first one, and I'm going to put them right sides together. Again, you can pin if you feel like you need to. If not, you can just go for it. It will line up nicer if you pin it, so just remember that. So right sides together, and I'll sew along here, and I'll do that all the way down, and then I'll continue um, to match them up and sew them together in rows until all of it is sewn together and it's one nice giant piece. After sewing all of your patchwork pieces together, we're then gonna create a layer with our batting. I'm just using soft and stable. I really like how thick it is and um, the way it stands and holds, holds its shape. Um, so that's a great option, but you can also just use regular batting, whatever you prefer. Um, but I'm gonna layer that and then my large piece of fabric um, we're gonna put it into a sandwich, right sides are out, and then if you want to quilt it, we're next gonna do the quilting. I think I'm just gonna do some straight lines down mine and see how that looks. Um, if not, just pin it in place and then we'll finish um, sewing it all together once I have finished my quilting. After you've got your main um, piece quilted, we're gonna set that off to the side for now, and then we're gonna take our pocket pieces. And I just did the exact same thing, so you should have a pocket front piece and a pocket back piece, so the inside and outside of the pocket. And then I'm gonna be putting more batting in between mine. Um, you could use fusible interfacing or just whatever batting you already used. And I created that sandwich effect with the right sides out on either side. Then, if you want to quilt that as well, you can. I think I'm going to actually leave mine unquilted and kind of leave it as that, like, contrast right there. Um, yeah, and have it like that. So I just have it pinned so that all the fabrics are there and lined up and in place. And then I'm ready to take one of my binding pieces, which is this striped fabric right here. And I'm going to fold it in half, take it over to my iron, and I'll iron this down. And then I'm going to fold... I'm going to lay the raw edges along one of the long edges of the pocket. So all the raw edges will match up like that, and I'm going to stitch that down. So let me iron that, and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. With that ironed, I'm just going to line it up along my presser foot, and I'm going to stitch along um, that raw edge all the way down. And then once that's sewn together, instead of going over back over to my table, I'm just gonna do this right here. I'm gonna fold that binding up and then over to the other side. And I wanna cover the stitching that I just made on this other side. And especially with my batting being a little bit thicker, I am probably gonna go and trim that, but then I can stitch that down. With your pocket piece binded on the top, just that top, next I'm gonna take it and place it on top of um, my large quilted piece. And I'm gonna sew some lines down it, probably one, two right here. So they'll make a sm two smaller pockets over here and then one large pocket over here. And I'll just do a straight line and I'll reinforce it at the top and the bottom just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Um, and then we'll set that aside and do our ties. To make the ties for our machine cover, we're just gonna take these um, long pieces, you should have four of them, and we're gonna fold them in half and iron that. So I'm gonna iron that down, and then once I have that ironed, I'm gonna fold those raw edges in to the center and iron those, so that way it'll fold and create the binding kind of strip um, and that will become our tie so I'm going to iron those and I'm also going to first thing actually is going to be folding this in and ironing that and sewing down it a quarter of an inch um, and that's going to finish off that raw edge for us so that way once we fold it in 
like so, you won't even have any raw edges for your ties. So I'm gonna stitch that first and then iron. Once you have your ties sewn, then we're gonna base them on to our um, big cover piece. And you're gonna go about six inches up and just pin that in place. Cause so we're just gonna baste it to hold it there um, until we do our binding and finish it off. So I'm gonna put one six inches up on every side on the long sides and like I said pin that in place and then I'll just take it over to my machine and about a quarter inch away from the edge I'll base that in place after you've got those straps sewn on next we're going to take our binding pieces which are just really long strips that you should have at least three of and we're going to take them and put them right sides together in the shape of an L just like this and I'll pin that in place and we're gonna sew them together to create a really long piece of binding so that we can bind all around um, our sewing machine cover. So now I can take it over to my machine and I'll just do a straight stitch from this point down to this point. So at the diagonal, which will attach the strips together. So if I had it sewn, it would look, end up looking like that. So I'll do that for all three pieces, attaching them together. So take this one so that'll attach that. And then take this one and do the same thing. Right sides together. And then pin in place and I'll sew those together. Once those pieces are sewn together, I'm going to take a ruler and line it up on the stitching line in a quarter of an inch and trim that excess fabric off so that way it'll open up and lay nicely once we get that ironed. So I'm just going to iron those open and then I'll take it and I'm going to iron it in half to create our strip of binding because then we can add it to um, our cover. After getting that binding ironed, we're then going to take it, I'm going to leave about a six inch strip off the end, not sewn. And I am just going to start on the middle of one of the long edges. It doesn't really matter where you begin. We're just going in a rectangle and I'm going to pin that spot. And then I'm just going to keep it unpinned. If you like to pin it, that is totally fine. You can pin it. Um, usually I just pin it down one side. And then once we get to the corner, I'm going to show you on the sewing machine, how I finish that corner and pivot right there. But you're going to want to make sure your ties, are laying in the middle. I actually just tied the two that are across from each other. I tied those together and then we are stitching right on top of the pocket as well right there. So make sure that is lined up and everything's laying smooth and flat. If you need to pin that some more, make sure you pin that. But now I can just take it over to my sewing machine and I'll show you what we're going to do over there. So over here at the sewing machine, I'm just doing a straight stitch. I'm going to line mine up with my presser foot. Um, which is a little bit more than a quarter of an inch and I'll just stitch down again like I said making sure everything's in line and in the right spot so once that is ready I'll just start sewing and then once you get to your corner I'm gonna leave my needle down I'm about a quarter inch away from the from the very end of my fabric and I'm just gonna take everything and pivot so turning it if you need to you could even just roll your mat up a little bit so it's easier to hold on to and make sure that binding I'm gonna lay it flat so it's kind of gonna fold right back here there's a little tuck and I'm just making sure that's laying flat so I don't have any puckers put my presser foot down again and then I can continue sewing down. So I'll do that for every corner. Make sure you pivot and then make sure you don't have any tucks. It'll just look so much nicer if you don't have any tucks. When you get back to your beginning, you're going to leave about a four, five, six inch opening. And then I have this tail on mine. And so you're going to have two tails and we're going to attach them together. So what you're wanna, going to want to do is match them up and see where they need to connect. So I need mine right there. So I'm going to take my pen 
and open this up a little bit. So I just go through one layer and pin that. You could also just use a marking tool, but this way, it's just a little quicker. So that one's pinned right there. I just moved that, so I gotta remeasure. Okay, so measure that, and then I'll pin that one into place and open it up once I know where it's gonna be. Right here. Okay. And then once, oops, once we have those pinned, it's a little tricky, but just make sure right sides are gonna go together and we're making the L shape again. And we just want to line up our pins into that L shape, just like this. Okay, so once that is ready, I like to take some more pins and pin where I would stitch it just to see if that's accurate. So pin that and see that one, I didn't do it accurately. So there's a little bit of movement still there. So I'll take those out and let's readjust. Oh, this is why it's good to mark so your pins don't fall out, but just easier for me this way. So I'm gonna take those and match. Let's match those. We're gonna put the green on top. So the back line is gonna be on top and you might need to like pull, pull it together to sew it accurately. Okay, and then once it's laying right sides together, I'm gonna pin it like I would stitch it. So from one corner to the other on that diagonal it's hard to tell, but there is that L shape going on right here. Once you have that pinned, I'm just going to follow my pins and slowly take them out as I go down that diagonal. And make sure you don't get any puckers. If I need to, I might take some of this out down here so that I have a little more wiggle room. I'll just be putting the binding on under. Make sure there's nothing else under it except for those two pieces of your binding. And I'll just start at one corner and then go to the other one. Once you're done, you can open it up and see, so that's all gonna get cut off, but you can see if it's laying flat, get that out of the way, and if it's gonna line up with the rest of the opening. So mine's gonna line up nicely, so now we can take this over to our table and cut that off. I'm just gonna use my scissors so that I make sure to get the right pieces, but I'm just cutting a quarter of an inch away from the stitching that we just did. like that okay so once we do that and then I can just iron it so that it lays nicely and it's ready for me to finish stitching down so I'm gonna iron those so it's not so wonky but then I can just um, take this stitch and connect it to this one so that our binding is all stitched down on one side for our final step, we're gonna take that binding that we just sewed on and we're gonna push it over to the other side. So just wrapping it around that raw edge. And if you want to, you can pin that in place. Let me flip that. 
So we're gonna wrap it over like this and pin it in place or clip it if you have clips. That's also a really great idea um, to use those. And then we're gonna stitch this down right along this edge. So I'm just gonna go right on top of it, just barely. I mean, probably like an eighth of an inch or less. I can get these all trimmed and stitch this binding down. And I'll do the same thing on this corner. I'm gonna flip it over and kind of fold it like this. So I'll stitch all the way up until about a quarter of an inch. And then I'll fold this end down and start stitching this way as I pivot across. So it's similar to how we did it on the other side, but you just pivot and create that little corner. It's kind of like a mitered corner almost just like that. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and get it sewn. And then once you are done sewing that binding, you are all done with your sewing machine cover. I love how cute this is. It's just a fun, small like version of a quilt and it's just awesome. I love how the soft and stable is in it. Um, yeah, and just all these fun fabrics really really great and i'm really glad that riley lake put those fabrics together and if you are wanting to make one or don't have any of those things i'll put links down below for all of the stuff that i used in this video and if you have any questions or comments make sure to leave them down below in the comment section and i'll try to get back to you make sure to check out the baby lock brilliant i'll put links down below for it or you can contact your local baby lock dealer and I will see you guys next time. Bye.